Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over potential divider circuits, also known as voltage divider circuits. So let's get started. Now a potential divider or voltage divider circuit is quite self-explanatory because what it involves is a voltage or a potential dividing across components in a circuit. So it says if two or more resistors are arranged in series, the voltage from the supply will split across the resistors. And this links in with our circuit rule for voltage in a series circuit, which said that the voltage across the components must add up to the supply voltage. So that's what we're seeing here. It then says the splitting depends on the relative resistances of the resistors. So here's our first example where we've got a 12 volt battery and two 500 ohm resistors, so two identical values of resistors. It then says in this case, the 12 volts from the supply will be split up equally between the two resistors since they both have the same resistance. That is, both resistors will have six volts across them. So we're saying that six volts and six volts will add up to give us the 12 volts there. So in a sense, this 12 volts is being divided up across each of these components, or it's being shared equally between the two resistors. And because they've got the same resistance value, then they take an equal share of the voltage. In the second example, however, we've got a 12 volt battery, and this time we've got a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 5 kilo ohm resistor. And it says that in this case, the resistors have different resistance values, so the splitting of the voltage from the supply will not be equal. Since V is proportional to R, voltage is directly proportional to resistance, from the equation V equals IR, remember this just means as the resistance goes up, the voltage goes up, and vice versa, then the voltage across the 10 kilo ohm resistor will be greater than that across the 5 kilo ohm resistor. So because this resistance value is bigger, it will take a greater share of the voltage. So it says this is because the resistance of the 10 kilo ohm resistor is greater than that of the 5 kilo ohm resistor. And in actual fact, because this one is double the resistance, this will actually take double the voltage. So this would in fact be 8 volts across this, and this would be 4 volts across this one, to add up to the 12 volts that we have from the supply. So here we can conclude that the greater the resistance of a resistor, the greater the voltage across it. It then says that in order to calculate the voltage across a resistor, there are two methods that can be used depending on the information that you are given. So the first method we're going to look at is when the supply voltage is known, which basically just means we're given a value of the supply voltage Vs, of the battery voltage. Now the first thing to point out is that this circuit is a bit different to the one we've seen previously. So what we've seen before is we've seen a circuit where we've had the battery up the top and the components down the bottom. Now what we've done is we've basically turned the circuit on its side so that we've got a battery here and we've then got R1 and R2 here. And you'll typically see circuits like this a lot for potential divider type questions. Now what we can also do is we can actually sometimes emit this battery here and say that this was zero volts down here and that this was Vs up here. Now that would be the same as saying a potential difference of whatever this battery voltage was. So just be aware that you might see a circuit like this without the actual battery drawn in there, but it might still have the values of potential difference. So it says if you're given two resistances and a supply voltage as shown above, so there's my R1, R2 and Vs, then we can use the following equation to find the voltage across resistor R2. So it says V2 equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vs. And this is essentially a ratio of resistances. But notice that similarly we can use the following equation to find the voltage across R1. So this voltage we would call V1, and this equals R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vs. So notice how the numerator is different to correspond to the voltage that we're trying to find. So if you're trying to find voltage V2, you use R2 on the top, and if you're trying to find voltage V1, you use R1 on the top. So this is our first potential divider equation. However, the second method looks at when the supply voltage is not known. So this time we don't know what Vs is. However, you might be given some other values such as resistances and voltages. So it says if you're given two resistances and a voltage value across one of the resistors, for example, then you can use the following equation. So it says V1 over V2 is equal to R1 over R2. So this is just showing you what we have here. So there's V1, there's V2, R1 and R2. So what this means is we've got a ratio of voltages is equal to the ratio of resistances. So in a question you're likely to be given three of these values and you have to work out the fourth unknown value. And that's our second equation for potential dividers. So just to summarise, if you want to calculate the voltage across a resistor or a different circuit component in a potential divider circuit, then you can use two equations. The first one is when the supply voltage is known, so you would use one of these depending on whether it was V1 or V2 you were trying to find. 
And the second one is when the supply voltage is not known, which is V1 over V2 equals R1 over R2. And you'll find both of these equations on the relationship sheet in the exam. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.